Well, we're back in Grand Tactician, the Civil War. They've come out with a new battle, and I want to check it out. Now, this battle actually took place in Florida, which is something we rarely get to see in Civil War games, are the real southern campaigns here. Now, I'm going to play as the Union. Historically, the Confederacy won this battle. Let's see if we can't change that, boys. The advance continues to Lake City along the railroad line. From there, the objective is Tallahassee, capital of the state of Florida. Colonel Henry's cavalry has been in the vanguard, brushing aside any enemy skirmishers covering the main force that is marching in three columns. East Volusti Station, Henry has met what seems to be a picket line. 7th Connecticut is to move forward and defeat the militia blocking the road. If strong resistance is met, Hawley's brigade marching in the first column will deploy and engage the enemy supported by artillery behind them. Guys, it's looking pretty interesting here, and as you can see, Volusti Station is the target. We can see that just like in the actual Battle of Volusti, some actual local militia here have decided to try to cut off our route um, and stop us from proceeding forward but we'll have to of course deal with that as it comes what i'm going to do is just take our general here uh we'll actually take general dayton himself or colonel william dayton and we are going to begin setting up just across from the objective point uh it's clear we're going to have to probably do a full move here in fact i'll just take let's take there we go, Brigadier General Truman Seymour. And we're just gonna set up like right here where you see the actual objective point. Once the enemy ap ap approaches, or if they approach, then of course we'll decide to switch up the line. So for now guys, just moving towards a lusty Florida. You guys know the deal here. We've got to weaken the Confederacy here in the South, show them we mean business. And we've got plenty of cavalry prepared to fight. So it looks like one of our forward cavalry has reached the area ahead of the first clearing guys over here where the railroad is. And I think we need to now go ahead and actually shift to the railroad itself. So I'm going to set up once again. We have the same idea with this approach, which is just to prepare just in case, of course, the enemy is there defending. And of course, um, if they ambush us or anything like that, then we'll set up as needed. Right now, of course, just moving into position. Everybody's going down that road by the clearing, and we've even got some infantry over there in the front approaching. But I think the most important thing in this battle is going to be the cavalry. I really do think they'll be able to save us if we get into a difficult situation. Only time will tell. See you soon, folks. All right, we're starting to see some rebels up there on the railroad, guys. Look at that. They are advancing. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Um, this is actually going to require a little bit of micromanagement. That's all right, though. I just want to make sure that we are in the best position possible. Get this guy over here, trying to get in the tree line as quickly as I can, guys. Even if it means a charge move, just to get in there quickly. And we'll put this guy on the far right over here. No, this might actually be too much. Let me cancel that move. Let's instead get him right over here. My goodness, look at that. The whole Confederate force is coming up the road. I'm going to put the cavalry. The cavalry's actually going to the right position, guys. I want to try to outflank the enemy. I am going to try to get one of these artillery pieces over here to begin firing. Not sure how that's going to go. We'll soon be able to see. All right, I'm just going to keep this guy here. I would like to move even closer to the enemy, but we've already got some units moving forward. Let's keep things as they are. Also try to get some of the artillery to go wide, so kind of to hang out over here and get some shots at the enemy. Come on now, boys. Face this way. There we go. Start getting some shots. We're not in cover, but this part of the enemy army hasn't arrived yet. So I'm going to try to engage the arriving part of the Confederate force and establish our dominance here over the railroad area. Let's back up just a bit. We got some artillery on the way. We got those cavalry moving on the right side. I might try to move this artillery. Actually, you know what? We can keep that artillery right there. That's not a problem. There we go. First volley what I'm talking about. Let's move forward with the Benjamin Skinner. We've got to keep in mind, we're not using the standard 1856 musket here. We're actually using Spencer carbines uh, to defend the area. Like I said, this is mostly a cavalry force, as you can probably imagine. So the Spencer carbine is going to make itself known quite a lot. See there, what are we facing? The 6th Florida Infantry. Come on, boys. Make sure we're arriving with some more infantry units. And we've also got an entirely other infantry group back here, guys. We're going to call them our unofficial uh, reinforcements, led by Barton. And I'm going to try to put Barton's men right there. I would like to do a 
double quick march, but I don't want to waste too much of their energy. So let's keep it here for now. There's four, uh, Captain Samuel. Begin firing, sir. We can get Captain Samuel doing a tremendous amount of damage here. And I'm also going to push forward with these boys, make sure that we are engaging the enemy. I want to make sure that they know they're going to face a lot of aggression if they do this way. Fix that. Terrible setup. At least the artillery is targeting the enemy here. Let's see where our cavalry are going. Okay, so the cavalry are going over here. I'm going to decide what to do with them afterwards. Here we go, get in there with the Spencer Carby, open fire. It's now or never, man. Why are they not firing? Gotta get way too close with that Spencer Carby, and in the meantime, we're getting hit on the right side as well. That is an issue. Alright, well, let's see what we can do with just a few volleys. Maybe we can knock the Florida boys down entirely. Take a look at the Confederate line over here. Yeah, they've got a nice little line going there, I'm not going to lie. But I'm going to keep on firing at that specific position, try to break that unit first. Let's see if that infantry is arriving. I'd like to get them in a proper formation here. Engage. Alright, let's get the cavalry. Let's get the cavalry. We've got a separate cavalry commander over here, uh, Colonel Henry. I'm going to immediately order him to get the cavalry on the flanks. Of course, I think you guys can see what we're trying to do here. There we go. Some more infantry support. That's what I'm talking about. We need as much as we can get. Even if we fail the first line, that's okay. And these are the actual eight U.S. colored troops. So in this battle, we actually get a chance to see um, some freed slaves actually able to fight back against the enemy. Obviously, some free men as well. This is beautiful, led by Charles Fribley. That's got to be a wonderful feeling to fire that musket at former slave owners, for goodness sakes. Also make sure we get the rest of this uh, artillery in the right place. But I think the thing that's going to change the battle is going to have to be that cavalry unit, as well as our arriving supporting units. I'm not sure if the colored infantry have fired yet. Might want to move even, even further forward. Let's advance a little bit. In fact, make it a fast advance. So far, the men have held out. I'm amazed at um, Captain Benjamin's men. They've only lost 54 men, and they've killed 246. No, sorry, that's how many men they have left. Never mind. Nonetheless, they're putting up an amazing fight against the Confederacy. Fire, boys. There we go, guys. We have broken the 6th Florida. I'm going to turn my attention now over here to these fellas. And that's going to be the 19th Georgia. Now we've got the colored troops as well as the standard troops opening fire on the enemy. This is beautiful. Look at this. There we go. The colored troops getting an excellent volley. Where are the cavalry, though? Are they arriving? We've got some artillery on the way. The cavalry are on the way, too. Just kind of taking their time. Now, we could order them to charge here. Right into the uh, enemy line. I think I'm going to do that. Oh, we're going to have to wait a bit. All right, never mind. Let's let them relax a bit. And that is a withering amount of fire. Beautiful work, boys. Let's see where the rest of those uh, infantry units are. Okay, here we go. They're, they're getting up the road. Beautiful. Now we're going to send them over here and put them right on the railroad. So we've got a secondary line of defense, of course. So far, I think we're doing a great job against the Confederacy. Let's see how Charles and Ripley's men are doing. Now, let's take a look at the situation. They are firing. They are doing a flanking shot. Come on, boys. The enemy's getting a flanking shot on us. Keep it up. Let's break the Georgia. We're going to have to, of course, switch fire over here to this unit. Might as well keep firing at this unit as well. It looks like we had one commander wounded in action. These things happen, my friends. They do occur. Okay, Skinner is low on ammunition. That is not good to hear, guys. Alright, Skinner being low on ammunition is a problem. Let's just hope they can keep it up for a few more minutes here. And this is Benjamin Skinner's group right here with Spencer Carbine. Of course, 
they made the Florida boys run. They killed a bunch of those Florida boys right there. And now, of course, dealing with the Georgia infantry. Not an easy group of men to face, the 19th Georgia. Now, there we go. We've got our cavalry. Let's do it. It's not going to be a standard charge. like the enemy HQ Colquitt's Brigade is also moving up here. There we go. We've got a proper cavalry charge going on here. After a really nice um, artillery strike there, by the way. And what I've got, what I'm very worried about, of course, the Connecticut boys are about to break. Let's just hope that we're keeping the focus on the 28th Georgia. But if we need to, we'll bring up some additional cavalry and uh, charge that 28th Georgia. There we go. Beautiful. The Stars and Stripes going to knock down the Stars and Bars, I hope, in this fight. And it looks like the infantry has just arrived. Some more supporting infantry, guys. We're going to get them over here in these gaps as quickly as possible. We have officially taken the railroad area. That's got me very happy. And look at all of the casualties over here. My goodness. Looks like we did break them, guys. We did break them. Beautiful job there. We've got another Georgia Brigade, but this is just a pile of dead bodies. Cavalry on both sides, infantry on both sides, and we've also broken the 23rd Georgia. Wow, okay, I'm excited. I am excited. We're doing far better, far better than the Union did during this actual battle. Get him. Don't let him come back. Getting hit pretty hard by enemy artillery, and I think it's got to be these two batteries right here. Let's fire on the batteries. Why not? At this point, I'm going to take this cavalry, and we are going to try to charge into the enemy batteries. Go for it. I love that follow-up fire as well on the enemy cavalry units. But my focus right now has got to be the artillery that's causing us so much damage, as well as the uh, enemy troops that have retreated from the battle. I mean, that is beautiful. Go for it, boys. Look at all those down rebels. I think we taught them a thing or two, and I believe that the colored troops here, look at this, guys. They are going to break the 27th Georgia as well, getting that much-needed vengeance against their former oppressors. Here we go. Into the charge. Probably got to go. 
go for the old house for an official victory here. Yeah, that volley definitely sent our cavalry scurrying. Can't say I blame them. Um, let's just work him down little by little. Now, what I'm thinking here, we've got five points back here. We've got three points there. We've got five points here. We've got five points here. We should be able to beat the enemy, even if we don't take the old house area. Um, so I think right now, at the Battle of OST, I'm going to hold. Another way to switch the battle to decisive is to do a massive amount of casualties on the enemy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, cause them a massive amount of casualties. So that's going to be what we're going to try here. Um, is just try to really beat the hell out of the enemy. It's, it's going towards our side, but it's still not a decisive battle. Let's actually fire... Might as well start firing on their cavalry. Of course, the 40th Massachusetts and the Massachusetts Battalion got beat up really badly. Those are our cavalrymen, uh, and so did the 7th Connecticut. Everybody else seems to be doing just fine. It seems to be your typical battle, um, at least in terms of our of our progress here. Let's see if we can move up another unit right to the left side. Let's get these infantry over here. I know they're in a weird position, but that's because we're keeping them on the road. Uh, but we will switch them around and perhaps even attack the old house area. I know these guys are not getting shots. All right, look at that. Look at that. The 27th Georgia about to break. In fact, if I could charge... I'm not going to charge. I'm just going to move forward. We're going to march forward, and hopefully that will cause the artillery to break but in terms of our cavalry, we absolutely used them up on those attacks. Not sure if that was a good idea. I think it was, <laughs> but I could be wrong. And Benjamin Skinner is back here because, of course, he spent almost all of his ammunition, man. I've never seen a unit spend their ammunition so quickly, but it was for a good cause. If we just take a look over there um, on the banks of this creek, you can see all of those downed Confederates, thanks to Skinner, as well as right there in the middle. Look at that. The rest of them are trying to break away. This is just adding to our victory. There's the minor victory button right there already. We just have to keep on knocking them down. Set them up. Knock them down, boys. Let's move forward to 7 New Hampshire. In fact, I wanted to... No, we should have done a charge. Uh, let me cancel that movement. That's what I'd rather do. Charge. Bayonets at the ready. Get these rebel guns, boys. Alright, they're moving in. Canister shot directly into our line of men. That can't be easy for them, but if they can make contact with the guns, I'll be a happy camper. Come on. Get them, boys. Nice! They didn't even make contact. They just got right up close and personal and fired a massive volley. That definitely seems to damage, damage Gamble's artillery quite a bit here. Even losing a single gunner is a big problem. Losing a single, um, you know, the guy that cleans the gun out, it's going to cause uh, the gun to slow down a bit, of course. We're just going to let them do their thing. They're doing fine here. I'm worried that they're flanked currently, but I don't see the flank indicator. But there we go. They broke them. Look at that, guys. We have broken one of the enemy artillery batteries. We're going to go for the second one, of course. Uh, my biggest concern is, of course, the remaining enemy cavalry over here. That can turn out to be quite a problem. Just get prepared for it. Most of our artillery is already firing in that general direction. And the rest of our men, we're just going to keep them here. Why move them when they're doing so well? Beautiful shooting, men. Now, one option here would be to move up to the old house area. We don't have to. Again, I still think we get a victory, but I guess that would end the battle almost immediately. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think we're going to hold our position for now. I'm content with this. It looks like even some of our cavalry may be getting that morale back. They may rejoin us in battle, although they, their unit cohesion is all messed up. Some of the guys, of course, running off into the surrounding swamps escape the battle. We might not have every single one of the guys here, so we're really going to give them some time to, uh, to get that morale back. And look at this. We've got some more
more infantry, we might as well push them on through, right up the road. At this point, I'm almost tempted to go for all estate over at the old house. I have no issue leaving the Floridians uh, alone, not worrying and not dealing with them at all, and just pretty much letting them walk away as long as they give us this battle. I think as long as we hold these locations and keep up the casualties, it's going to be a major victory, as you can see up there. You know, might as well push forward. Let's go. I'll even make it a charge, just in case we catch anyone uh, off guard. But I also want to push up here because of the terrain, guys. There's some woods here, some trees, etc. That should help defend us. Might as well go ahead and push up, and we'll also be doing our guys a favor by getting rid of the artillery there, and hopefully moving the enemy HQ back as well. Coldpoint's HQ. New York boys, go! to get that artillery even closer to the front line. Do the same here. I love those beautiful sounds in this game, by the way. They're just so well done. What can I say? Oh, wow. Looks like the battle is going to be ending with the enemy retreat, my friends. A major victory here. Absolutely unbelievable. I would say that's pretty awesome. We're going to let the enemy retreat like men. We're not going to fire at them or chase them. Let them get off the battlefield. It's been a fair fight, I believe. And we have, of course, changed history here. Getting a victory in all state as the Union. I'll take what I can get, guys. And there we go. A victory. It looks like our army is victorious victorious there uh, against the district of eastern florida i hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much for watching as always guys uh, i do appreciate it when you hit that like button drop a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already done that we're a strategy channel a tiny one at that and we want to be a big strong one with lots of subs lots of great stuff lots of great stuff the best of the stuff the greatest stuff all right i'll catch you on the next one guys thank you so much for watching